Good evening, everybody. It's Mike with Alpha Shark. Uh, it's Thursday, the 14th of March. Uh, tonight, I have a quicker webinar than normal for you guys. I really didn't have the time to put into it this week that I wanted to, but I want to look at tight setups in a market breakout. And um, where I'm coming from on this, if you guys remember, just before Christmas, I did a webinar with you guys. And I pounded the table that we are still going to get a Santa rally, right? Do you guys remember that? Those of you guys were with me. Now, I didn't know that that Santa rally was going to turn into what we had, right? But I was pretty damn sure that we were still going to get a Santa rally starting the day after Christmas. So I want to show you why I think a big move is coming here in the market uh, at this point and uh, why I'm, I, I want to talk about some stuff coming up. Kamal, thank you. I wouldn't be that far north, unfortunately. Um, I think I'll be up by um, um, uh, Mount uh, Mount Pleasant area. But if I do, I would. I'll, I'll write that down. Thank you very much. So anyway, if you want to get a hold of me, the easiest way to get a hold of me, by the way, is on Twitter, at Options Mike, okay? So if you guys um, do not follow me on Twitter, I highly recommend you go to Ad Options Mike. You follow me. I tweet tons and tons of stuff out there for everybody, not people who just subscribe to my surface that they have their own private private Twitter. But for anybody that wants news, I put a ton of stuff out there, including every Sunday I do a ton of chart charts. So Ad Options Mike, you can email me at Mike at smartoptiontrading.com and on YouTube where I post videos and stuff, youtube.com slash options mike. Okay. So risk disclaimer, day trading, short-term trading, options trading, and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They generally are not appropriate for someone with limited capital, limited or no trading experience, and or low tolerance or risk. Never execute a trade unless you can afford to and are prepared to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risk and you can lose your entire investment. No trades are recommendations or advice and we cannot be sued for losses of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Contact your broker or RIA for execution margin or other capital requirements. Everyone watching this presentation here is to all disclaimers at alphashark.com and myself, Mike Pisani. Like I said today, guys, this is going to be interactive. It's going to be more of a workshop. Consider this a little bit of free training, if you would. So first, let's go over market sentiment. Then I want to go over some charts with tight setups. And then if we have, we'll do a couple of your charts before we move on. All right, so sentiment, guys. The best way I could describe this at this point is we're waiting for a move. And by that, what I mean, if you look what everything's going on, you know, back uh, two months ago, fear and greed index was extreme, right? We were down and hovering around zero. Now we're up at the 60 area. We're not too far gone here. We're, we're doing just okay. You can see that a month ago we were 67. You know, we've been at 60, we've been 59. We're hanging in this area. You know, we're kind of waiting for everything to happen. This is fine. There's nothing to fear here in either direction. If you look at sentiment off of stock twits, and this is really takes in the retail investor. That's us, right? We're all retail investors here. Maybe some of you guys aren't, but for the most part, we are all trading our own money. and We're not trading somebody else's money for them. You can see sentiment starting to creep back up. You see the spies up to 52%. The Qs are up to 60%, but nowhere as high. We've seen the Qs get up to 80%, right? So nowhere near the highs, as hot as this thing can get. And IWM, which came way down, is starting to creep back up to 45%. But these things are nowhere near the highs. So so this tells you that, um, yeah, we can go over BA down. Remind me when we get to that point, okay? Uh, we'll happy to go over to BA. Don't let me forget. Um this tells me, guys, that sentiment's not too height, that retail's not all in. And, you know, that's a good thing. So when we come here to the oscillator, it's kind of telling us the same thing. You know, we got really hot, right? The, look, from very cold, remember the, the, the December 24th low here, to extremely hot. We stayed hot for a long time. And if you notice something here, guys, there's been a, a very, very, very subtle change in the oscillator. Last year, you'll notice we kept spending, you know, here's your zero line. We kept spending a lot of time below zero, right? Very negative sentiment, especially, um, you know, especially, you know, most of last year. You notice what's changed here this year? We have, you know, so far a lot of time hot. Notice we got a nice reading on Monday. Look at Monday. We came into Monday to a nice reading, and we're still in good shape. We're still very much nice and on the on the right side of neutral and in good shape here for continued upward action. 
And while nobody wants to talk about it or hear about it, the, um, you know, that little pullback that we got last week really did its job of allowing everything to reset. And, you know, for those that are members of my service, we were guys, you know, we knew it. I was telling everybody last week to be very, very careful. But I kept saying that I maintained a bullish bias in this market. And because I thought that, you know, we just needed to cool off. So, you know, the, the name op now oscillator, which tracks the NASDAQ, same thing, very similar. Negative 63 today, still in good shape. We're still on the right side of things in the right direction. And then you come to the SPY. So this is where I point out to you guys a couple of things. And the first one is very, very simple. Look at RSI. La coming into last week, you see how we were butting up against 70. We're getting hot up here. ETFs, the SPY specifically, while it can stay overbought for a little bit, it very rarely does. It needs it needs that that fear of missing out, that FOMO, right? The the dumb move that you always see in a in a stock or a market before it comes in. You guys understand what I'm saying by that? When when you look at this chart here right now on the SPY, you look at how nicely we've come off the bottom. And there's no fear of missing out here. Look how nice. Up, sideways. Up, sideways. Up, reconnect with the eight day. Up, reconnect with the eight day. Up, sideways. Hot, RSI is hot. We're too hot. We're into a major resistance area, 280. Let's yank back a bit. Okay, 3% pullback and re and go. I'm recording it, yes, uh, if it works. Sometimes it, it, it craps out in the middle of it, and that's I, I don't know why. I've never quite figured out why it does that, Arthur. But it is on record. Um, and then you get this move right back up to here. And I've been saying for a long time we need to get over 280 and hold over it. So what did we get the last two days, guys? Mom, we got the last two days we closed both days over 280, right? Stan, right? Two days. Two days now we in a row we've closed over 280. Okay? Held it. Not even retested it. I thought maybe at one point today they might scream us down to retest it and see how we react. And 282, this area right now, is your final hurdle. You clear that, guys, and I think we're off to the races. All right? So this is something to keep a close eye on here. You know, we had this trend where we held the eight day until last week, all the way from January 4th, broke it briefly. Spent one session below the 200 day and right back up. Oh, Deborah, the, the, you know, the range today was extremely tight. And we've seen a couple of these days, right? You look at today here, right? Go back to, um, 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 um uh, the Thursday, what? Tuesday, right? Another one. And look at some of these very tight candles we've been seeing lately. Some incredibly tight ranges on the indexes lately. That, you know, and this is unusual for this time of year. This is usually the time of year when we're trending, right? This is, this is summer-esque, right? Does that, does that make sense, guys? This is very summer-like what's going on here. And it's a sign of a market that is digesting a move and it's not ready to break out, but it's definitely not willing to sell off either. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, you know what, Dan? It's not that I predicted. It's that, you know, to me, that's what I felt we needed. And you look at RSI, last week's little pullback, right? Look what it did for RSI. It gave us room to the upside. It created fresh room. And I don't want to spend so much time on this, but I, I, I think sometimes it's important for you guys to look at things in a different light and see how I'm seeing things or try to give you a, how I'm seeing things. So I'm looking at here saying we got room. Markets made room to run where it didn't have room when we hit it a week ago, right? On this day here, the market really didn't have room to run. It was hot. It was heated. Everything was in the wrong place for a breakout at that point. Now we're in a much better spot for it. Okay. Let's go through the rest of everything here. All right. The VIX. Is the VIX showing us any fear? You know, I've been all over this with the VIX. Is there, is there anything here in the VIX that scares you? I will tell you, in the la last week, I made one small short trade on the, um, on the VIX. I've been making all my money finding longs in this market. 
Because one thing, even in last week, you know what this market was still giving? It was still giving plenty of names to play to the long side, right? That's another sign. The market, not everything's dumping, right? So the VIX is showing no fear here. You know, after that huge spike back into December, it's been nothing but down, 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 a couple little stair steps on the way up. But if, if you reverse this, this is exactly what you'd want to see in a, in a chart going up. Yep, I do look at the weekly charts. They look all look good. So the VIX here back into a low volatility range doesn't care here. It's hmm. the one thing I hate about this is when you have the tool up, it doesn't work. All right, the Qs. Okay, the QQQs also into a resistance zone. Top of the Bollinger Band here. They are starting to lead. The Qs have not been leading for a while. Has anybody noticed this subtle little change in the market on the Qs? The Qs went from trailing and lagging to starting to show some signs of leadership. Now, why do we like when the Qs are leading? What does that tell us? Anybody? Not that fangs are running necessarily, Stan, but that's a that's a that's a good point. Doyle, you got it. Risk on, right? Dan, Stan, risk on. Yep. Right. It tells us if they're scared, they're not buying tech, right? Because of the high volatility in tech, right? The beta, right? You talk about the the beta. Tech has a higher beta than most names. You know, when they're nervous, they're buying they're buying staples like the utilities, consumer staples, right? When they're buying tech names, they're not so worried, are they? They're they're willing to have more risk on, higher risk on. That's good. And we like when tech is leading because tech moves faster, doesn't it? We like to play tech names because they generally have a wider range, don't they? And they tend to move faster when they're in play. Okay? So the Qs leading up here, like the SPY at resistance, looking good. Man, all-time high is not that far away on this one. RSI is in good shape. The IWM, what a beautiful move out, led us all the way up, was the first one to start showing signs of weakness. If you can watch, you can even watch this on an intraday chart. Now, it is not showing the same strength back up. It's breathing here and taking a break. This is the one little red flag that I would point to right now, okay? Is that the IWM is now starting to trail again where it was a leader through most of the way up. Doesn't mean that we can't go without it. It doesn't mean that we're in trouble. It just means that for whatever reason, money's not flowing back into it like it was. And for now, the 200 day here remains a stiff resistance area. Can you guys see the green line? See how it played into it and couldn't hold above it? All right. So I told you this was a workshop. So any questions on sentiment on where we're at in the markets? Uh, I am going to tell you why here I am bullish on the markets. I believe a big move is coming, and I'm remaining bullish on it. So I want to go to this chart first. Okay. So this is the SPY. I took all my drawings off of it, okay? Hedge funds are, there's a, hedge funds are very heavy in cash still, which is another reason why I'm bullish, because guess what's going to happen if we start to break out? They're going to chase. So right now, when you look at the SPY, I want you to focus on the Bollinger Bands, the blue highlight, okay? What do you notice that's happening here? Pinch, right? They're starting to get very, 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 very tight. Remember up here before we fell apart? All right. There. Remember back? Look look at here. Look how tight we got back in here into October before everything came in, right? Look how tight they're starting to get right here. Very, very tight setup again. It tells us. Right. What I will always tell you, if you can't recognize it in candles, you could recognize it with the Bollinger Bands. When Bollinger Bands start tightening up, the markets or whatever that is, is usually getting ready for a big move. 
Well, the only thing I'm going to caution you, Tony, is we don't know the direction, right? We we know it's getting ready for a squeeze, some type, of, but it could be a short. It could be a, a, a it could squeeze the bulls, right? It could be a big move down. We don't we don't know the direction. Bollinger bands don't tell us direction, do they? Tight setups don't tell us direction. They tell us something's getting ready. So when I look here on the spy right now, I see a very very tight setup starting to develop at resistance. Okay. Now I want you guys to think about what's going on out there. What what's next week? Does anybody know what we have next week? Rich, right, the Fed. Right? No, no, we got the Fed next week, guys. The Fed meeting, okay? Now, I don't think the Fed's going to undo what they've been working hard to undo after their last uh, every after everything here. So what the market's going to be looking to the Fed for is for them to confirm that they're going to be patient, right? So as long as the Fed delivers, that's another good thing for the market, right? What else is we we getting a what else for the last 2 days has been non-stop chatter in the markets? Randall, China, 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 China. In fact, just a little while ago, our president speaking again for the, I don't know, fifth time today or something. I'm not even sure which one it was. Uh, Probabil will know the next three or four weeks about a possible trade deal with China. Trump says China has been very responsible, very, very, very responsible. Okay, so he's doing that. What else is he doing? Have you noticed a subtle change in his rhetoric in the last week? He's not saying anything negative about China. Who's he starting to to to, to turn his his um his negativity upon? Uh, okay, I was going to say EU Doyle, but I'll take Germany. Yep, stand Europe, Europe, the European Union. He's turning it on them. He's talking tariffs. He's talking tough. He's talking stuff there. My guess is we're very, very close to a deal. And he knows it, and that's why you're not seeing him put – do you see him putting any pressure? Do you see him threatening to put the tariffs back into place or anything like that? I mean, I, I think you know, you're close to a deal. I mean, even the White House today, did you see what they said today about if they get a deal? They believe a 2,000-point rise in the Dow. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you I don't, I don't care what they think will happen with the, if they get a good deal. That's just – that's just hype. That's hyperbole. But if you look at the market here, you got a couple big catalysts here very close by, don't we? And what did they vote to do today? A big vote took place over in Britain today. What did they vote to do? Yep. Kick the can, right, guys? So we no longer have to worry about a – no no exit Brexit, right? At least not for three months until the end of June. So lucky us, we get to hear this now for another three months plus. Yay. <laughs> but you understand my point. All right. So look at the tightened band. So when you look at something, you see how the Bollinger Bands are tightening up here? So I am looking for a big move in this market soon. Now, it may not be this week, it may not be next week, but I think it's coming, and I think it's going to be to the upside. I think it's going to try to break to the upside. Uh, the European Union is going to agree to it. If they don't agree to it, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. What do they have to, what do they have to lose by granting an extension? But I agree. They could always say no, Jaden. I'm not, I'm not trying to be they, – they could say no, but, you know – it, it's like everything that goes on. Everybody goes to the last minute. So here you go. You got a tight setup at resistance. And, you know, we're only 10 handles off the all-time high here, right? Market's not far from it. I think we have a big move coming, and I think it's up. You have an inverted head and shoulders pattern here, right? And you're at the neckline, and boys are getting ready to go. So I've been trying to keep everybody that, you know, in my service, to keep them bullish-minded. 
to be mindful of the type of risk they have on until this market's ready to move, but to try to keep them bullish and not go short. Because this market, even last week, was last week an easy short? Was there a lot to short last week? I mean, it was it was it was pretty quick, and it was just kind of, you know, you get a quick move and then it bounced right back, and you know, that's not what you want to be playing your money into. So right here, I have um, I'm I'm still looking for long. So let's start looking at some charts. So let me start off with this one. All right. How can I do this? That was perfect. I want you to look at this chart here. What do you see when you look at that there? Where I blocked it off. What do you notice that's going on? Yep, use a hedge. Squeeze. Look how tight the Bollinger Bands were getting here. We were talking about. Look how tight the setup was getting here. Does this start to look like here? Right? Tight, tight setups here. Right? Now, look look how tight that's getting. Look what's going on. Now, we didn't know what was going to come after, right? We didn't know what was going to happen. I, I didn't know, you know, you know, what was coming. But I could tell you, I could see the setup setting up. And there it is, off that low. Top, test to the bottom, fake out, right? Fake out to the high side, right? Fake out to the bottom, and then boom, and now we're going. So you've had one name, a big name, break to the upside already, haven't you? And doesn't Apple have a hell of a lot of weight on this market? All right, what does Apple have coming next, not next week, the week after? Apple has an event, an announcement. No, nope, not reports. It's an event. It's a special event where I very much expect they're going to uh, they're going to announce on uh, TV streaming to compete against um, YouTube Live. Uh, I mean, yeah, YouTube TV and Sling and uh, Hulu TV, all this stuff, right? So that's coming. So would I be chasing Apple up here? No. I would look for maybe a reconnect with the eight day, but it's riding the top of the bowl and your bear band is strong, right? RSI is a little hot. I think this thing has 190 in its sights at this point, but we'll see. Okay. I actually, Doyle, I, I use YouTube TV. I think it's fabulous. But I'll just tell you. So look at that as an example of what just happened. So let's go to a couple of other names. Look at Amazon. What do you notice on the Bollinger Bands here? How tight are we getting, right? This thing, this stock was moving 100, 100 a day. Why would I get banned for YouTube? All right. Tight, tight setup. Tested the bottom. Testing the top. Is this where this one goes? It breaks 1,700, and this thing could be off to the races. You look for 1730 in your 200 day, and then you get through there and you start looking off to 1779, right? Comes to the downside, obviously we can go down to the bottom, but look at the tight setup. This is where you should be going in on charts and putting, what I'm trying to hint at here is you should be putting in notifications. Does that make sense? You should have a notification going in. Oh, I hear you, Doyle. I don't do that. I'm not going to get banned, but yeah. Okay, so you should be looking at this. Another tight setup. Now, this name I hate at this point. I, I do not anticipate a breakout unless I see something I really like or flow. I usually try to wait for it. Um, I do like to buy weakness on a name, and I do do that quite a bit, like I bought IQ this week. But... Um, I, you know, if I'm looking for a breakout and it's stuck in a range, I'll look for that move or, or I may take it as it's coming off the eight day at that point, Richard, or something like that. So look at Netflix here. Now, this name, by the way, I'm going to tell you is off my radar for the most part because it's trading so absolutely sloppy right now. Both daily and intraday, this thing is chopping people up and spitting them out. But look at the Bollinger Bands, how tight they're getting here. 
this tight range, Netflix is setting up for a big move, guys, and I really don't know the direction. And the reason I say I don't know the direction is because with all the competition heating up, it could be it's setting up and they've been selling into this, right? Look at the CMF indicator down here. This shows money flow. It doesn't show money flowing in. It shows money's been flowing out slowly. But we'll watch it. We'll see. Because if it gets above here, it can run. The problem with this one, every time it does this, it fakes everybody out. It pops up and then it dumps. And it pops up and it dumps. But look at how tight the Bollinger Bands are here on this one. Who's looked at Twitter lately? Look at the Bollinger Bands set up here. Look how tight these things are starting to get. Now this name has been stuck and what's not helping it, it's what's going on with Facebook okay point blank I'm gonna tell you guys this what's going on there with Facebook has not helping Twitter in the slightest way here okay but if you look at Twitter it's got a very tight Bollinger Band setup right it needs to get a close over 32 to really get going that's the gap it's got that big gap here that we're all watching okay they keep buying calls on it. Um, May 32s this week were bought, I think, 7,000 of them at one point. Okay, Trying to get going. That was yesterday, I believe. Trying to wake up. I have those on my radar. Okay, Tight setup. We love tight setups because when names get tight, we know a move's coming. That's when we're looking to take some calls and take it for a long ride. Okay, You guys know this is one of my favorite names out there, Square. I trade this all the time. Traded it today. Look at the Bollinger Bands on Square, contracting here, getting really tight. Earnings Day, shot above it. Got a lot of people long. Gap down and never gave anybody out. Shot down. Came all the way to the 200-day. Held it. It's been holding the 200-day. If this thing gives you a gift of a touch to the 200-day, you should be buying it. I don't think we're going to get back there, but you never know. Back off of it, above all the moving averages, right in the middle here. Very, 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 very tight. The name is getting ready to move. I, I look at this chart, and I will tell you guys, I'm looking at this thinking it's going to try to go up and retest new highs this year. It may take a little bit. It's consolidating. It still had a huge move it's absorbing. But this name has a lot of momentum in it. So I keep track of it, right? Volume is down here. Notice on these days here, it's just low volume. It's not a lot of low volume on it right now. So we'll keep an eye on it. So what I'm trying to show you guys here, um, PayPal was tight after the move after hours. I didn't see it. Um, is There's a lot of names out there that are getting, getting very, very tight here. And they're getting ready for a big move. And I'm trying to focus you guys on some of these names to see what I'm seeing in the market, right? To see what I'm looking at here. These names, if they trigger long or short, should be good for a, a nice trade. Keep an eye on them. Put alerts out there. These are things you can keep your eyes on. Do you guys have questions about this and why I like these moves and what I'm looking at them for? Again, look at Square when we tightened up here last time. And then it finally putzed around for a bit right kind of like we're doing here before it finally took off and then had this other nice big move so any questions on anything I've gone over today none cool all right let's do a couple of charts here so first of all Boeing. Everybody's asking me about Boeing. Boeing, 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 Boeing. Okay. So this is where I tell you the same thing I told all my subscribers. At the end of the day, do I, th do I think the market is totally overbought? I don't think the market's slightly overbought here, Richard. I don't think the market's overbought at all. I think the market's in a good spot. Honest answer. Um, I, I, if I thought it was overbought, you guys have been here with me for a long time. You know I'd be the first person telling you to be careful. I don't think the market's overbought here. That doesn't mean it's going to move. It's just not ready. You know, it's not overbought. So Boeing, Boeing to me is going to be fine. At the end of the day, this company's going to be fine, right? 
it'll get through this, it'll move on, and orders will come screaming back in. Right now, we have a lot of unknowns, right? Now, it was very extended up here, the nosebleed territory, before it came in, right? Big volume, still above the 200-day, still above the 100-day. All it did so far was fill this gap that it created back from earnings and, and flew up. You have a nice gap now here above 400 all the way up to about 415, right? So for me here, guys, I'm looking at 415 options in either April or May for a long-term play when I think we're okay. And we won't know we're okay until we get the news. Does that make sense? You know, we need to understand what the big problem is and where we're going short term it's an unknown mark I, I i don't have a crystal ball buddy i wish i did i you know, i i can't tell you because it's a news driven event that was in the making right so short term we could bounce hard here or we could sell off a little bit more maybe down to 355 and see if the 200 day holds it it really depends upon what kind of news comes out what the fault of that crash was and what's going to happen with it and i can't i cannot predict that i can tell you at the end of the day, Boeing's going to be fine. But, you know, it could go lower from here. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the best way to trade this right now is to buy way out of the money cheap options either direction for a move. Let it come to you so you don't put a lot of risk on. Does that make sense? So on Tuesday, I grabbed one 400 call at $1.09 looking to try to make a quick 100 bucks on a scalp. On a bounce you know what I got up 30 bucks before the thing reversed in my face and I lost 10 bucks but I was risking risking a hundred bucks to try to make at least a hundred bucks does that make sense I was moving for a 10 buck move it just it didn't get it um, too much noise too much constant news coming in but I will tell you keep an eye on stuff like that tomorrow especially tomorrow if it looks like it wants to bounce tomorrow grab a weekly cheap option to see if it'll move don't risk much. Risk is premium paid, right? If you're not willing to lose a hundred bucks in a trade, you know, think you need to think about it. So Boeing, I think, is okay. I think longer term, once the know it, the, the thing's in, you can try the 415. Somebody said to me the other day, "We need to be in this now, so we don't miss the move." I'm like, "Do you really think this thing's going to gap all the way up to 415 before you have a chance to get into it?" I don't. Uh, I, I just don't think that's going to happen that fast. Procter & Gamble. I think Procter & Gamble hit another all-time high this week, didn't it? Was it today or yesterday? It was today, right? Good point. Nice look. Look how tight the Bollinger Bands got again, right? After a big move, it consolidated tight setup, now riding it higher. Beautiful chart. Thank you for pointing that out. Who was that? Uh, Richard, thank you. Nice look. All right, same thing sideways prop back up went again right notice the tight bollinger band we knew it was going to get a move we just didn't know the direction okay this thing's had an incredible run here i mean th for this name this is a massive run we haven't seen like this forever i just uh, arthur i'm looking at april or may 415 calls my thoughts on ostk my thoughts on ostk is that this company has earnings next week that the the buyout of their sale of their um, retail division hasn't happened yet again. That every time the CEO says they're going to sell, he opens his mouth, nothing happens. Their, their T0 fund did not get the funding it was supposed to. I don't know here. I don't know, William. Um, I own it. I'm very red on it. I added some down the other day around 15. Um, I may add a little bit more. I'm extremely red. I'm waiting for a catalyst to get going. Also keeping an eye on Bitcoin because if Bitcoin wakes up, some of these blockchain names will wake back up again too. But right now there's nothing going on with Bitcoin and you know I don't know. So I, I, really, I really just don't know when I look at a name like this right now. Uh, it's just out of play. We'll see. I think earnings are on Tuesday. We'll see where it goes from there. What's another name we could look at here that I wanted to show you guys today? Um, no. IQ. IQ, again, this name is trying to wake up. It's chopping around, descending here a little bit. But what I like about it is you have this big move. 
now holding above the 21 day and your 200 day and setting up for a move. I didn't love today's candle, but today's candle, everything got bit. So keep an eye on this one in China names. If it can get back and it clears 28, it's going to run. That said, today was not a pretty candle, but it was an inside day on a day when most China names were down. Uh, keeping an eye on this one. You get it again. Keep an eye on that one. Baba doing the same type of thing back and forth here, guys. Just waiting. We're waiting for the deal. These names are all biding their time here, waiting uh, for their deal. I'll do one or two more charts, guys, and I'm going to call it a night. It's been an extremely long week. I was at a funeral yesterday and didn't get in until 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, I follow some of the, the pot stocks on Canada, but I don't, I don't follow the Canadian Stock Exchange, Doyle. No. DTE? I don't know that one. Okay, energy name. Um, nice chart, acting better than the rest of the sector, that's for sure. KM, I mean, sorry, uh, Sharish. Um, got a doji here today where it tried to break out, so watch tomorrow to see what it wants to do. It's running hot. It may need a little bit of time. It may need a little bit of rest or a little bit of a pull in here. Be careful chasing it. CGC, to me, the pot stocks are, are consolidating and they've had a huge run and I don't know what the next catalyst is, guys. Uh, you look at CGC here, you have a very tight wedge pattern developing, right? You can draw it down through here and up through here. It's going sideways. It's getting very tight, the Bollinger Band. It's getting ready for a big move. Um, so just keep an eye on it, and we'll see which way it wants to go. Um, you know, it looks like it's trying to wake up. ACB had a big move yesterday on the Nelson Peltz news, holding it up. This is one that a lot of people like. They think this could be the big winner long term over CGC. And then, of course, Cron. Cron, Cron. Another one. Look how tight the Bollinger Bands are getting after this big move, consolidating. So they're all on my radar, but there's no really good setup here right now. They're in chop mode. Devin, another energy name. Uh, I'm very suspect of that buying today, guys. I think... Uh, I don't think they quite realized what it was. So here's what I'm going to show you guys. And this is why I, I, I always like to look at this stuff. Hang tight with me. I believe... That um, you know, it turned out funky. This they got these got a huge bump. See, this is all changed now. Let me see if I can find the original orders. Hang tight. See, when when they pump these things, there it is. Yeah. Okay. This is what I'm looking for. The Nigerians. I don't think they got this order right, guys. It was a spread. See these here? They came in below bid. I believe um, these were closed, and then the July, July 33s were were sold to open because they IV dropped on the order when it came in the 10,000 of them. That is my belief that they moved them up and sold those calls to open. Charge trying to wake up, energy is trying to wake up. If energy goes, this will go with it. I don't know if it's going to have the power to get back up here, guys. I really just don't. So I'd just be careful with it. It just was not, just wasn't, the action wasn't right. It wasn't clean. All right, two more. We'll do EA and the banks. EA has been on my radar. Uh, I traded it really well uh, about two weeks, a couple weeks ago. And at this point, um, it needs to clear 100. And you can see it's just struggling with it, and it can't get through it. Now, what's happening finally is after a big dip in the CMF, you see money starting to flow back into it here. See this little uptick this week? So I have an alert at 100. I'm watching for option flow. So it just needs that move. I know SA did an article on it, and they talked about that Apex Games, they believe, is going to bring a – I'm sorry, Apex Legends, they believe that game is going to bring a billion dollars of new revenue into EA. Now, I don't know if that's real or not. I don't know if that's them uh, making it up. But they said if that's true, it'll pop it back to 150. I take all that with a grain of salt. If we get above 100 – 
RSI is cooled off. I'm looking for a move to the 200 day around 110. Then we see where we go from there. Lastly, let's do the banks, BA. There's been flow into the banks the last two days. Oh, not BA, e, BAC, sorry. And they're trying to wake up. The banks have been lagging, but they've been range bound. So like the markets, they're range bound. If the banks go, what's going to happen? If the banks get break this range, what's going to happen? Off the markets are going to go, right? The markets are going to go. I tweeted yesterday. Yesterday, I said as long as the banks, because there was a little weakness at one point yesterday, I said as long as the banks are whole, strong, the markets aren't going to sell. So if the banks are strong, the market's not going anywhere, guys. Too much weight upon the market. So keep an eye on them. If we break here, we go. We got a tight setup on Bank of America. The Fins themselves, the XLF, right, fighting the 200-day. If this can get going, it, you know, we can take off. JP Morgan today was strong, and it was leading, okay, trying to get back up here. Still has to get through the 200-day. So these things have been these things have been quiet for over a year now. So if they take off, we can go. All right, guys, I love doing these for you. I hope you guys all had a wonderful night. Uh, I'm exhausted. You see you tomorrow. Uh, I don't no, I don't use the re, the relative rotation graphs. I'm not sure what they are, Richard. Thank you though. Uh, hope this helps you guys. If you want to learn more about me, guys, um, stop at smartoptiontrading.com. I have a free newsletter every Friday. Sign up for it. It goes out there. Um, I'll give it to you guys all here. You can sign up for the free newsletter right there. There's no charge for that. I do a video newsletter every Friday afternoon. It'll come out to you guys. You can review it. It'll go over what I like and what I don't like moving forward and stuff like that. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. I am exhausted. I wish I had more in me. I think I'm doing another one next uh, Thursday. Should be better for that. Have a great night, guys. Trade well. See you guys. In a, see you people in my service tomorrow. The rest of you guys next week. Take care.